I had a question from a student about this homework problem. It's homework problem nine in section 3.2 homework. And it's where you're finding the standard deviation of a, of a frequency table, of a frequency distribution. And so question 10 is very similar. And so I thought I would show a video as to how to go about doing this. If you look at the get more help and you go through the um, help me solve this or anything to oh, view an example or help me solve this, I forgot they're, they're down here now. So if you click on help me solve this, it's gonna walk you through this formula. But something I want you to know is that under the get more help, there's a stat crunch button and stat crunch will make this problem a lot easier. You have to have an understanding though. We have to have an understanding of what this X is. And this X is some representative number. And so what we know is that there's one number in between 30 and 36. We don't know what that number is. And so we're going to try to minimize the error and take the best guess that we can and go right in the middle. So right in the middle between 30 and 36, if I were to add them up and divide by two, or just think about it, is the number 33. Um, you can see that we have a, a class width of seven. So right in the, we could just keep adding seven. So 33 plus seven is 40. And again, right in the middle of these guys is 40. So this goes back to your chapter two knowledge of frequency tables. So we're getting what you did back in chapter two to class midpoint. That's gonna be our data value. We're gonna assume the only data value in here is 33. The only data in here is 40, 40, sorry. And the only data value between 44 and 50, well, all four of them are, is gonna be right in the middle or 47. And so I'm gonna use this stat crunch to help me out. So if you go here and click on stat crunch, it'll take a second and bring it up. Now, I might have to minimize this a little bit. So let's come down here. You're gonna put your data in one column. So if you remember, I have values from 30 to 36, but the one value that I'm gonna take is 33. I'm gonna let that be the representative value. I know that I have a class width of seven, so the next one is 40. Next data value is 47. So let me pause there. I'm just adding seven each time. Now notice 47 is right in between 44 and 50. Three up from 44, three down from 50. So I just keep adding seven, 54. 54 is right in between 51 and 57. Keep adding seven. That would put me at 61, which is right in between 58 and 64. Um, keep adding 7, 68, right in between 65 and 71. And here's my last one. Add seven to that, and I guess I come up with 75. So I just added that class width every time. So these numbers right here, the 33, 40, all the way down to the 75, they're the class midpoint of each one. And under the variable two, I'm gonna put the frequencies. So one time for that first category, one time for the second one, four times for the 47, one time for the 54. For the 61, it's 12 times, it's much weighted there. 38, whoops, somehow it went up to the top there. Must have been my hand, so it was one up there. Let me get down here. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. So 12 times, and then it's 38 times. And if I go down, 34 times. So again, it's described in the video, but what we're assuming is that all 34 of the values that are in that last block are right in the middle of 75. Sometimes it'll be too high, sometimes it'll be too low, but we're minimizing error. So we're literally just plugging the data in there. So now I'm gonna bring this up so that I see the full screen. And we're gonna go over here to stat. And what we're talking in the summary stats. Now what we have right now is, we do have data that's arranged in a column, but this would only be one set of data. Remember, we have kind of combined data, data that's related to one another. We need to know the midpoint as well as how many times it happened. So we're gonna to go to this grouped bin data. So the bins or the data is in variable one. The count of the data, the frequency is in variable two. And we literally just have to do that. If you come down here to this box, you it'll it's set already to give you the number of data points, the mean, the variance, the standard deviation. 
we really only care about the standard deviation. So I'm just going to click on that. And then I'm going to hit compute. And off to the side here, it's going to compute the standard deviation as 8.314. Perfect. I'm going to remember that number, 8.314. They want me to round to one decimal place. So I'm going to put 8.3 and check that answer. And it's going to tell me, hey, you did that correctly. It is going to ask me about um, considering a difference of 20% between two values of a standard deviation to be significant. How does the computed value compare with the given standard deviation of 11.1? .1? Let's see. If we look at 11.1 .1 and take 20% of it, that comes out to 2.22. Let's add that to 11. Point, or actually, 2.22. We're below. Remember what our standard deviation was. It was 8.3. We can see that up here in this gray box. We came up with 8.3. So we want to look at, well, if I take, sorry, if I take, um, let me clear this out. If I take 11.1 .1 and subtract away the 2.22, I come up with 8.88. Well, my value is beyond that. So we have, um, the value is significantly less than the value, is what I would mark here. And it's telling me, well done. Now, why did I mark that? Let me show you again. 8.88 was the low value. From 11.1, .1, we were able to go down to 8.88, but I was even farther than that. I was 8.3. So that was even more away from the 11.1, .1, which was the original data's one. Sometimes you'll find that it's within those. So it's not you're marking A every time. So if you're working your problem, your numbers are different. But this is the best way to go about it in a, in a very clean manner. So um, if we, I don't know, I think that's enough for you to, to get a, a handle on it. So again, where did I find that stat crunch? Get more help stat crunch. And this is available in all the homework. You can be able to calculate the means and the standard deviations through the stat crunch um, option. And I can, let me show you a little bit more how to do that in case I didn't show that to you in other variables. I could, um, let's suppose I wanted just to get the, the mean of this seven data point here in variable one. I would go to summary stats column. I would say, hey, I want the data in variable one. You can pretty much leave these alone and it, it, it selects some different options. But if I click compute, it's telling me, hey, in this first column, if those were your data, you have seven data points. The mean of this data, 53 to the 75, is 54. And then it tells me the standard deviation of those. Now, notice the standard deviation is different than what I found because I wasn't applying any of the uh, frequencies. But I just want you to see, and even in previous sections, like 3.1, you can use StatCrunch as well. Hopefully this video helps. Um, again, the student reached out to me via uh, the Canvas email, and so feel free to do that. Thank you so much. Bye.